Welcome to Cinema KC, your own personal film festival. I'm Michelle Davidson here with the talented and prolific filmmaker Patrick Ray. Thank you for having me. Well, hey, let's give your stats because you've been doing this for a long time. You're an Emmy award winning filmmaker. You've made like 50 short films or more. Something like that. <laughs> and you just made your second feature film, Nail Biter. That's correct. What's it like to make films in the Kansas City area? The great thing about working in Kansas City is that everybody's so welcoming to We're nice here. the process. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if Come I go, make a film in my house. If I go des decide to shoot in a restaurant, they're like, oh, wow, you're making a movie. Great. We'll close for you today. It's like, wow, really? Okay. Wow. And not charge me $10,000. Nice. So and it's feed amazing. you too? <laughs> and, and feed. And yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, it's just been a really great process, and uh, the only time it, it's not as much fun is when it's snowing. But then you have to write a script that takes place in the snow. So. Right. Well, um, Nailbiter does not take place in the snow, but no, let's, it does not. let's take a look at the trailer. Here's Nailbiter. The National Weather Service in Topeka has issued a tornado warning for North Leavenworth County. At 3.19 p.m., National Weather Service Doppler radar indicated a severe thunderstorm warning capable of producing a tornado near Overland Park moving northeast at 15 miles per hour. The tornado will be near 6 miles east of Lanessa at 3.34 p.m. If traveling on the highway, evacuate vehicles immediately. I love the trailer because it makes you want to see the film. The whole point, right? Thank goodness. Yes. <laughs> Thank goodness. You got some amazing locations in there in the Kansas City area. Tell us about those. Um, we shot a lot of the film in Lawrence, Kansas. Mm -hmm. um, the main location, which is the cellar, uh, was actually shot in a building called the Reuter Building, which used to be an organ factory. And actually, was great used, place for a horror film. Yeah, absolutely perfect. It had like soundproof walls and stuff like that, mm -hmm. so we couldn't hear traffic outside, so it was great. Um, but it was used for a, a classic horror movie called Carnival of Souls in the 1960s. So. Um, if you ever watch that film, you can see a lot of the rooms from the Reuter building. So uh, we were hoping that we were going to be blessed with good luck since that movie is kind of considered a, a cult classic. So, yeah. And then we shot uh, in Leewood, Kansas, mm -hmm. which uh, was awesome. I mean, we, we shot overnight, so basically the sun went down and then we took over the, the neighborhood street and, and filmed. <laughs> And neighbors were very nice. They were so very nice, very thankfully. Supportive they were very welcoming. Like I said, Kansas is a great place to shoot. So. And you like to work with the same people. You have a team that you surround yourself with. Absolutely. I, I've worked with uh, Ryan Scott Jones since 2000. Uh, we met in college and we formed Sino Reality Pictures and we've been working now for almost 11 years. And uh, he does a lot of the sound editing and uh, just editing in general and graphics work. And uh, I've been working with Hanman Brown Eagle since 2006 and uh, he's a genius. And if, ever, if you guys ever have a chance to work with him, do it. <laughs> and then, of course, Julian Bickford has, has been my composer on a lot of projects as well. So Now, on Nailbiter, is special effects, are special effects an important part of the film? We tried to really emphasize uh, trying to show less effects. And we did a lot of practical effects, but no CGI, really. I know mm -hmm. since we have a tornado in the movie, we're going to have to do that with CGI. Or we're just going to have to wait outside in April and May for a tornado to show up, which I wouldn't recommend doing um, <laughs> with expensive equipment. So, uh, you know, we, we focus primarily on practical effects and um, try to stay away from CGI as much as possible. And who wrote the film? Uh, Kendall Sin wrote the script, and uh, we started working on it in 2007. And so now it's 2011. We're finally finished editing and the it's movie. amazing. We were told five years when we wrote the script, so we're one year ahead of ahead of schedule. Well, congratulations so, on you. that. <laughs> we'll be right back with more Patrick Ray on Cinema KC. Welcome back to Cinema KC. I'm with Patrick Ray, and we're about to see your short film, Time's Up Eve. Where did you get the idea from? Well, I've always been a fan of film noir, um, mm -hmm. 40s films like uh, The Maltese Falcon and Casablanca, and I've also liked Blade Runner, so I tried to combine Smash those worlds Smash together. Smash those worlds together, but it's more of a sci-fi horror film with a 40s setting. And originally, the, the main character was a man, but we decided to change it to a female to make her fun fatale. And uh, shot the entire movie in the West Bottoms. And it looks great. Thank Let's you. take a look at Time's Up Eve.
come for me. It was inescapable. I'd hope for more time, but my time's up. They got him, probably an hour ago. Now he's just a vacant shell, same as the rest. It's amazing how little is left after someone loses their soul. I feel nothing. No pain, no joy, emptiness. We had three shining years together. Three years before they came. Now he's no different than the others. My best friend since grade school, Lorraine. Now eight months gone. Hard to believe it's been that long. Marsh. From the looks of things, his time's up. Couldn't happen to a nicer guy. The mark of a dealer. Without a dealer's help, those vile creatures can't collect the share of souls they need. They mark you. Each cut means another life destroyed. Looks like Dennis was a busy guy. Being a dealer guarantees you more time to keep your own soul, time to enjoy the simple things in life. For Dennis, it's beer and girly mags. But like everyone else, the dealer has to pay up eventually. <laughs> Nobody 
was sure if they moved within the fog or were part of the fog itself. But they were never seen except in the dead of night. And even then, nobody ever really saw them. Please, I can get you more. Dimes! I have no idea what they use them for, but they crave them, as many as they can gather. Even a soul like his. somehow. Subway stopped running months ago. Maybe if I can make it to the docks. You know I had no choice. Alan, I kept yours. I changed my mind. I could never hand it over to them. You see? Holding out on us, Eve. No. You knew it would come to this. Looks like we have two more to collect. You'll never get your bony hands on this. As for me, you're too late. It's 
amazing how little is left after someone loses their soul. They feel nothing. No pain. No joy. Emptiness. But I've felt that way for months. What's the difference, anyhow? Those monsters got what they came for. I was one of the last. Then they departed as quickly as they arrived. They were probably on the clock. Same as everyone else. What a beautifully shot film. Have you shot with black and white, that style before? This is the first film we we actually shot in black and white, so it was kind of, you know, an experiment to see how well we could do it. Tell us about the lead actress. I thought she was just amazing in it. The lead actress is Sharon Wright, and like I said, originally we were shooting the, uh, to have a male lead in the film. So we wrote the script surrounding a male lead and we decided to change it to a female lead which I thought was a little bit more interesting and compelling. Mm -hmm. So uh, she had the right femme fatale look. She actually is wearing hair extensions. Her hair isn't that long. But um, a lot of it people... It moved. It blew yeah, a lot of people compliment her running. and they said one guy in LA said, hey, how'd you get Kim Basinger to be in your film? So Huge compliment That's a huge compliment. Her. Absolutely. Yeah, I could see that. I could definitely see that. Now, where did you shoot the film? You said the West Bottom. We shot in the West Bottom. We shot a little bit in the Royer building from mm -hmm. Nailbiter. Uh, mm -hmm. We shot all the interior stuff there and made it look like she was inside of an apartment complex um, in the 40s. And then we shot in the West Bottoms for three nights. I want to know how you made the effect of the soul being removed. Well, we had a bunch of like really cheesy plastic pearls that we got from like from, like an antique store or something, mm -hmm. and, and so we basically just uh, used that as the pearl. And uh, in post production, doing an After Effects, we were able to just kind of trace the the pearl and add a blue glow to it, and um, it worked. It worked, yeah, absolutely. And the and shot with great. the grate. With the pearl falling, I mean, we had to do that like 20 times because we had we had a fog machine trying to make it look like there was steam coming out of the, the grate. Now, working on a lot of your films, I've seen you standing in front of a huge board with your storyboards taped up. It's amazing. Right. You like to storyboard. I like to storyboard, yes. I don't like starting the storyboard. It's always It always takes me, it's like doing your taxes. You have to get going and doing them. And once you're in the middle <laughs> like of it, you're like, oh, this is easy. So, you know, I like to kind of, you know, pre-visualize the entire movie, every shot. Um, and it really helps, you know, for Hahnemann to see that so that he can eventually go to the location and take photos, which he calls photo boards. And, um, you know, he can just create his lighting diagram based off of that. And well, um, you, you, you luckily I can draw job. okay. You can draw beautifully. You okay, can. Right, yeah. We'll be right back with more Cinema KC. <laughs> Welcome back to Cinema KC, and we're with filmmaker Patrick Ray. You always tend to make horror films, but they have elements of comedy and, you know, just other genres. Do you want to make films that are not necessarily horror films? Well, yeah, I'd like to make some sci-fi films at mm -hmm. some point. Um, I, comedy is really hard for me. I think if I make a straight comedy, it won't be quite as funny. But if I, funny. If, if I infuse comedy into something, then I, I'm more successful at it, I think. We tend to struggle to find short films for everybody out there. You have to go to film festivals. Right. But there are ways to see your short films. How can people see them? Well, a lot of them are on Vimeo, uh, Vimeo.com, which is like a really nice YouTube. Basically, mm -hmm. it has the films in HD. Um, our website, CinoReality.com, which has links to some of the films. Um, so those are the best places to see them, and of course, film festivals. Right. So. And then now on Cinema KC. And on Cinema KC, absolutely. <laughs> Tell me about who inspires you in the film world. John Carpenter has always been my biggest uh, influence. Uh, actually, John Carpenter from 1978 to 1988. After that, he... Got to qualify that. Yeah, okay. right. Um, you know, Steven Spielberg, I mean, I'd be lying if I said he didn't influence mm -hmm. me in some capacity. Um, you know, and, and the new directors that I really like are Christopher Nolan, Darren Aronofsky. Who inspires you outside the film world that have an effect on the kind of films you create? Uh, my family, I would say. My parents are, you know, they've always been very supportive. And, you know, my mom said that at one point she had a nightmare that I decided to become a doctor. <laughs> So, you know, Most so she's been very supportive in, in me and my film. She's always wanted me to be a filmmaker, so um, so they've always been really good okay. inspiration. That's great. What's the best movie ever made in your mind? Raiders of the Lost Ark. That's 
you, no doubt. This why why you can't that argue that? that. Well, it's 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 you know it, it's perfect. It doesn't really. It, there's nothing in there that you would change. I feel like if you watch a movie and there's always something that you think, well, this could be shorter, this could be mm -hmm. longer, this effect isn't very good. But for me, that movie is just perfect. 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 Just perfect. Yeah. What are you working on next? You always have many things on your I'm, Well, I just finished a short line. film called Hell Week, uh, which you wrote, of course. Yes. And uh, just a plug it's for you. Amazing. And then I am doing a short film called Rhino in April, which uh, John Nickham and Jai Nitz co-wrote together. And then I'm working on a feature film called The Mirror Washer, which is a, a sci-fi movie. It's not a horror movie. So, and it has, some com it has comedy you. in it. It does so, have comedy in it, so, so that, that'll be fun for you to absolutely. kind of... A new challenge for you. Yeah. What else in your personal life do you think affects the way that you make film? Hmm. Well, I subject myself to watching a lot of movies. I watch just about every kind of movie you can you can watch. You like except films. romantic comedies. You like films except for romantic comedies. R except for romantic comedies. Well, thank you, Patrick, Absolutely. and thanks for watching Cinema KC. We'll thank see you, you next time. You.